straight about Talk she. Recorded live. Okay. Can can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi Frank. Hi, Terry, how are you going? Um, Good. I, I'm just gonna do an intro um and then we get started, or would you like to do the intro? Um well, let's see. Let me make sure I got uh, things started here for recording. It's not recording yet. Uh, Gerald, are you starting your recording on your end? Gerald, is Gerald on yet, Frank? Yeah, he might be muted because of his microphone. Okay. Let's see. Make sure that... Let me get that going here first, and then we'll do the intro. How about that? Okay. Well, do you want me to jump straight in? I'll, I'll do a, do an intro, and we'll get going? Yeah, let's do an intro, Frank. Yeah, All right. yeah, let's do. Okay, well, well, well welcome, everybody. Um, this um, Thursday night, the 8th of November. Um, thank you for coming on to the Acadia call. Um, this is a, a call that we want to try and cover a few things over the next couple of hours and the purpose of these calls are both a way of introducing Eucadia and the different uh, websites and information that is covered by the different Eucadian websites like 1-7 and in fact tonight we'll also talk about a website 1-evil with some information, important information. So there is that introduction for people who have never heard about it, who've come on for the first time and want to ask questions like what this is all about. At the same time, uh, these calls uh, we're hoping will be ongoing calls that provide education, new information, new useful information for people who have been on previous calls and are looking for encouragement in what they're reading and discussing uh, but also as a way of, of answering questions as you read. And like any uh, course of information, <clears throat> to be able to progress you through um, key parts of Eucadia in each episode. So it's a bit of a balancing act. There is, as I say, the introduction uh, for people who have never heard about this before, uh, as well as for people who have been on previous calls and are looking to um, stay encouraged, find out new information, and, and obviously be able to ask questions. So in the two hours that we've got available uh, tonight, um, this is what I, I hope um, everyone is happy to, to hear is a, a rough agenda for the call tonight. I'd like to start, because we, have going to, we are going to have new people on, I'd like to do a restart just quickly for about 10, 15 minutes, just a quick summary of what is Eucadia all about? And in particular, when we, we talk about canon law and uh, the forms of law that we've been working on, what is that all about? What are we trying to achieve? Once we get through that, then what I'd like to do is share with uh, the call some of the latest information that has come to us in regards to the origin of testamentary trusts what is the first form? Where do they come, where do they come from? Um, can, we, can we find a ground zero for them? Also, some very pertinent information on that and how that relates to the forms of law that we see in courts. We discussed this last week, but it's important because this is new information that will help. And, and especially I want to focus tonight on um, specific uh, relief uh, suggestions and assistance for people that are facing very real issues at the moment, whether it be foreclosure, whether it be tax, whether it be a criminal case or any kind of case before the courts, whether it be bills. And I'd like to go back through SESTA KV <clears throat> as one of the areas that we go through tonight. Um, and then I want to leave at least 40 uh, to 50 minutes, if, if it all works out, for being able to answer questions, questions and answers. So hopefully that's a, an okay agenda. Um, we'll try and cover all those points tonight. And in that, I hope that we will be discussing, well, in fact, I know we'll be discussing new things because I haven't mentioned some of this before, but that we cover 
interest for everybody who, who are on the call, whether they are new or whether they have heard and have been reading for some time. So let me start then just by this first question of uh, that people ask, uh, what is UK all about? Um, what is one? Uh, can you uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I just got muted then. Hello. Um, just answering the question of what is Ukata all about? Uh, what is One Heaven all about? So, so let me start with this first question of what is Ukata? Uh, best way to describe it is, if you like, the journey of how it came to be written. <clears throat> so I'm Franco Collins. I live in Australia. I've been doing this now for more than 25 years. And Eucadia started um, actually from a, a question of, um, is there a purpose? Uh, I've done many things in my life. Um, some I regret, um, many I don't. I've experienced work in politics. I've spent time in a monastery. I've worked in business. I've worked with homeless. I've worked in, I've played rock and roll. I've done a whole range of different things in my life. But Eucadia really started from the very personal question of um, I have had all my life these gnawing questions of is there a purpose, is there a connection uh, or are we faced in our life between two separate realities uh, the reality that we have in our faith in the belief that there's something more um, and then this reality that is the world we see in front of us um, are the two separate uh, are we destined never to see the two come together? Um, is there a reason? So Eucadia and the journey of Eucadia started first in writing the journey of UCA, which you can find on uh, eucadia.com. That's U-C-A-D-I-A.com. And then it followed through with the 23 chapters on uh, the journey of, of self, the journey of me. And it was a personal quest to understand how things worked. Uh, when I finished this, um, what I came to realize was that um, it's fine to talk about how things are connected. Life, is, life may well be described as a dream. Uh, we may be able to describe universal laws that appear to be at every level of, of, of matter, but that's not how people um, necessarily view the world. We are all born from culture. We're, we're, we're born from a context. We learn things from our parents. We learn things from our family, a broader family, our school, our community, and the faith that we may be brought up in, whether it be Christian, Muslim, Hindu, uh, Judaism, uh, or any religion, or even a non-religion. So it's not good enough just simply to say, here is a, a set of ideas. <clears throat> we, we come from a cultural context. So I then embarked on the journey of, of trying to understand how we come about with these different ideas of faith and where do they come from. And this is the areas of uh, faith that came from um, the different UK websites, whether it be One Faith of God or whether it be One Islam or One Spirit Tribe or One Island or the Book of the Green Race. Um, when I finished that, um, it, it was apparent that there was a strand through those faiths and through the life of a very small group of people compared to the, the world that have consistently hidden behind good people and have shown a consistent thread of severe mental illness and yet these people have been the driving force to keep the world divided. So it, it became apparent to me that that unless that was exposed, that rather than wars being um, uh, a act of God or some um, terrible mistake, or whether um, a oil spill is a terrible mistake, or the lack of support uh, because of a hurricane is a terrible mistake, or that some uh, rat poison in soft drink is a terrible mistake, that there was a common theme through here where rather than being a mistake, there was a deliberate and conscious decision to make bad things happen to maintain control. So that's where one evil came from, uh, to try and expose not one particular group, 
but a thread of mental illness rather than uh, supporting uh, this idea that mental illness could be uh, cloaked as evil, a force of evil. And when I'd finished that, then uh, the, the question was put to me, um, well, this is fine, but what about the fact that people are living in uh, societies, uh, people need money, and the very people that you've just outlined are the ones that have the only systems on the planet uh, to run. I'll give an example. Uh, there have been quotes in the paper when people have been arguing about the Federal Reserve Bank and what it's doing and how it's behaved. And the strongest argument for the Federal Reserve Banks to continue to be where they are has actually turned out to be the simplest and the most shocking. In the absence of an alternative, there is no alternative. In other words, we're it. There is no alternative. Therefore, if we go, the entire system goes. Now, <clears throat> clearly that is uh, banks holding uh, communities and our nations and the world to ransom, and that's precisely what they're doing. So it was challenged to me, unless you can put in front of people some practical systems that uh, show a currency uh, that doesn't involve banks raping and pillaging our energy, unless you can show people how they can regain uh, their wealth rather than being stolen, then you're not really doing a lot for people. You're just coming up with a whole lot of ideas like many other people have done before you and the world's not going to change. So I guess that's how Eukadia has evolved. And in a sense, that's why Eukadia has so many different parts to it. Uh, it wasn't a journey that I started out consciously to do. <clears throat> and if someone had asked me 25 years ago for all the weekends that I've missed, for all the sunrises and sunsets that I've missed, for the, uh, all the days that have not been a holiday, would I have chosen to do this? <clears throat> Quite honestly, I would have said no. But... Things have evolved, uh, time has evolved, a purpose has evolved, and I can see no um, more compelling reason at the moment, given the pressing needs of people and the willingness of people to learn new ideas, that I hope what I'm showing and sharing with you uh, is pertinent to this time. So that is Eukadia. And within that, of course, is, is the concept of uh, one heaven and the covenant of one heaven and the law. Now, one of the things you're going to hear from people, if you haven't already, but it will come again more and more, is that there will be almost uh, an impulsive reaction from people where they'll say, oh, your cave sounds like a cult, or one heaven, oh, it's a cult. Now, this will be based on absolutely no uh, research. Uh, it's an easy thing to say, and uh, it may be based on some underlying antagonism or might just simply be the way that, that, that some people are. But I assure you, in no way do I claim to be anything other than like you. And as I have explained the journey tonight, honestly, how it came to be, the whole purpose and the only purpose of everything associated with Eukadia is to end a world of madness a world where religion is used as the excuse of control, where cults are able to lie and hide and instead of uh, being exposed, throw back the line against those that are trying to reveal the truth and say that they are anti-Semitic or they are a cult. This is, if this was a cult, then I, I would say to you, then what the uh, uh, Roman cult is, um, is something to the absolute extreme. The fact is that none of this uh, is designed to create a religion. It is about providing people the tools to challenge a system that, quite frankly, should have been challenged a long time ago. And I'll give an example now, and then we'll move, move forward to some new, new ideas. 490 plus years ago, and I don't know if some of you have heard me say this before, but 490 plus years ago, there was a fellow called Martin Luther. And I'm sure in his time, people told Martin Luther that he was creating a cult. <clears throat> but he uh, lived at the time when Unum Sanctum 
was relatively recent. And he saw exactly 